What's going on everybody? Leo here of the Creative Library and thanks so much for checking out another one of our videos. As you can tell, this is not our normal setup. Uh, my wife and I are in the middle of a move and we don't move into our new place until June 1st. So that's the reasoning behind this. <laughs> uh, but I didn't want to have that move, you know, mess up our upload schedule. So I thought I'd take an opportunity to go ahead and make a video about um, just a really highly, highly requested topic, which is my personal camera settings on my GH5 for wedding filmmaking. And just to let you know, like my goals on a wedding day, I mean, a wedding day is really fast paced. You don't know, you don't really know what's gonna happen exactly at every single moment. So my whole idea when it comes to custom, customizing my GH5 is I want um, speed without sacrificing quality. Um, I just wanna be able to get to my shooting mode as fast as possible and with knowing that I'm gonna get the highest quality uh, possible in post-production as possible. So that's what you're gonna see here. And I'm not gonna be going through absolutely everything on my camera that I change, because that would just take forever. <laughs> uh, but I will be going through three main things. Uh, one of them is just general camera settings that work across the board um, and also uh, my function buttons, what I set each of those to, and how many I use. Um, and lastly, I'll be going through the custom one, two, and three dial settings that I put. Those are actually probably the most important. Um, but yeah, and I'll go ahead and leave the table of contents right here. So, you know, if you don't wanna see a certain section, uh, you can go ahead and jump forward because this is probably gonna be a little long of a video. So I hope this helps and uh, even if you're not a wedding filmmaker, I mean, the GH5 is an incredible camera and you can set, you can set it to shoot however you want, whether you're like a documentary filmmaker or whatever, but I just wanted to share how I use it, what, how I customize it, and hopefully that helps you guys out. So let's go ahead and dive in and we'll start off with general camera settings. So the first things for the general camera settings is I'm gonna make sure that I'm in this, uh, movie mode here just for general camera settings and I'll click menu and I'm gonna come up here to the movie tab the first thing I change is exposure mode I just want to make sure that that's in manual because I expose everything for manual and as I said earlier I'm not gonna be going through all of these um, but I will be touching on them later on so yeah just be expecting that but all of these I don't really touch for now the next thing I go through is record format. I, uh, I edit on a PC, so I just leave that in MP4. Um, if you're on Mac, you know, MOV would probably be best for you, but for me, MP4 works just fine. Uh, record quality, we will touch on that later on. Uh, the next thing I wanna highlight is this luminance level. Um, this is gonna change whether you're in 8-bit or 10-bit. So for me right now, I just, or, or for either mode, I always uh, choose the one that has the zero option because that just gives me the, the broader range when it comes to luminance levels. So I definitely want the full range. Don't touch any of these. Um, the next thing that I want to highlight for general settings is this uh, mic level adjustment. I always set this down to negative 12 and the next thing being the mic limiter, I turn that on. Uh, the reason for that is I just, um, I, for on-camera audio, I always have a Rode VideoMic Pro on the camera, and I trust the preamps in the Rode VideoMic more than the one on camera. So that's why I set it down to negative 12 on camera, and then on my Rode VideoMic Pro, I, uh, switch the, the switch to plus 20 um, and with that limiter I mean all of that just ensures that I'm getting a really high quality um, audio levels if need be uh, and that's just for scratch audio I always 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 record um, external audio because I just want the highest quality audio possible for my videos so that's the mic level adjustment and We'll just keep coming down here. That's it for that tab. 
Uh, next, we'll come to exposure. This is actually a really popular one, and it could actually, it'll help you out a lot. Um, if you change this first line up here, where it says ISO increments, it comes default as one EV, but I switch it up to one third EV. What that does is it actually gives you just a little bit more control when it comes to your ISO increments. Rather than going up one stop every single time, you're going up one third of a stop um, every, every time you press that button. So, and then along with ISO, that extended ISO, I have that on because without it on, uh, your lowest ISO setting you can go to is 200, uh, but with extended ISO, you can actually go down to 100. So again, just more control. So we'll just keep going down here on the menus. Um, all of this, um, I think this is the last one in this screen. I wanna go through um, to this touch setting because if, um, I want to leave the touch screen on, but the thing I want to change is this touch tab. Because if I turn this on, you'll see when I have the screen, you know, the, I, I want as much real estate on my screen as possible. And this little bar right here, these little four tabs, um, they, they take up a little bit of the screen and I want, <laughs> I want that screen, it's precious real estate. So in order to turn that off, um, you just have to come through Go to operation, touch settings, and touch tab, turn that off. And now that tab is gone. And that tab, I mean, you can keep it on if you want. Uh, the tab has, you know, just like the little creative modes that you can shoot in. It has um, some more function buttons if you want them. For me personally, I have plenty already on the camera, so I don't really use that tab again. So I just turn that off. And uh, we'll just keep going down here through these menus real quick. Uh, video priority display, I want to turn that on because that just gives, gives me all the video features uh, that I want on, on the screen. Um, so that's like, you know, what frame per second I'm shooting at and everything that's video related, it'll put it on the screen. And that's it for that. So we'll hop over here to settings, and the only thing that I change in this tab is the eye sensor. This thing is super annoying. I have no idea why they put it on here. Maybe it's helpful for other people, but for me, it's not. Uh, what this is, is this eye sensor right here. So actually, I'll go ahead and, yeah. So right now I have it as LVF MON auto. So that this little sensor right here, if I block it, the screen will go away and the, the viewing will change to the live viewfinder. So that's super annoying. <laughs> um, I definitely don't want that going on and off on a wedding day. So I just switch it to monitor and we're done. Now that sensor doesn't do anything. And that's it for the general settings. I'll go through what this uh, means later on, but that's it for the general settings. So. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into the function buttons, how I set it up um, on a wedding day. And again, this is all for speed and functionality. And uh, I just want to make sure that I'm uh, doing exact, I want the camera to do exactly what I want it to do as fast as possible. So if, uh, if you don't know, uh, the GH5 actually has a ton of function buttons for you to customize. So you have function one up here, function two, function three, four, five right there. Even They even put one right here, function six. And then you can actually make the joystick each direction and pushing each of those a function. So you have five function buttons right here with this little joystick. Um, and also this dial setting, up, down, left, right. Um, <laughs> that was an old cheat code. Um, <laughs> up, down, left, right is, uh, they can all be function buttons as well. So a ton, a ton, a ton of function buttons to customize. But let's hop into how I use them um, on a wedding day. So the first one here, function one, and get that in focus there. Function one, I set that to peaking. 
you can see it's turning on and off right there. Peaking is just helps me with um, nailing focus. You know, I can I can push it once and it's peaking low. Push it twice, it's peaking high. So it just helps me get a um, proper focus on a wedding day. I can turn it on and off super quick. Really, really helpful. I love it. The next one, function two, I actually set that to the waveform and vector scopes. That just helps me with exposure. Um, just one form of making sure that I'm not peaking any, or I'm not clipping any highlights, or I'm not getting too much in the shadows. I can click that on and off, mainly for waveforms for me personally, but, uh, but yeah, so I want that as function two. Function three, I set that to zebras. And uh, zebras, if you don't know, this is actually the feature I use most often. Um, the Panasonic introduced it first in the GH4, which is what I'm shooting my face on right now. Um, and I, I've used it ever since then. It's absolutely amazing. Um, so the first zebra is, I set that to 65, and zebra two, I set that to 95. The reason for those two settings is 65 allows you to, or make sure, helps, <laughs> uh, helps you with exposing skin tones. And 95 helps you expose for the brightest spots in the image in general. So you can really, really nail down your exposure. Um, I love that feature. I wanted that really quick. So it's actually closest to my thumb. I mean, I know <laughs> this doesn't seem like a big jump from here to here, but my, my thumb just naturally rests here. So I use that most often. So I wanted that right there, ready to go. And that zebra function, we'll get into this later, but it actually changes depending on the mode that I'm in or the, depending on what uh, profile I'm shooting on. And I'll show you that later on. So next function four is actually the stabilizer. And you may be asking why in the world would you wanna turn on and off your stabilizer really, really quick? Well, if you don't know, the GH5 actually uses up way more battery um, they're not way more. It, it just uses up the battery a lot quicker when it has the stabilizer on. And the reason being is, you know, it just needs more power to operate that, um, operate that stabilizer internally. So on a wedding day, you know, you have things like the, the ceremony speeches, just times of the day where I, I'm probably going to be on sticks. So I don't need a stabilizer. It's already going to be stabilized. It's not going to be moving. So to save battery life, I wanna be able to turn that on and off real quick. And the reason to turn it on quick is because maybe something happens during a speech and you know I have to take my camera off really, really quick off the tripod and I can turn that stabilizer on and I can go handheld really quick. So that's the reason why I have that as function four. Function five right here is actually, I don't, it's kind of weird <laughs> because it's all the way over here. My hand doesn't really, I don't really have my hand here. I usually have my hand on the actual like lens most of the time. So I, I don't really use this function button, but I still, I didn't want it to go to waste because it's already on the camera. So I set that as the histogram. I don't typically use the histogram to help me with exposure, but I wanted to put it there just, just to help me out if need be. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't really use that one too much. The last function button is this one right here. This is, I don't know if this is a new one that they put on the GH5, which is actually pretty cool. It's, you know, it's kind of stealthy. I like it. <laughs> um, but it's right next to the lens. And for me, what made sense was making that the X teleconverter, the X teleconverter button. So if you don't know what this does is, so right now I have the Voigtlander 17.5 on this uh, GH5. And if I turn that X teleconverter on, it doubles the focal distance of the lens without losing quality. Um, that's super helpful on a wedding day because man, if you're, you know, if something's happening really far away and you don't have time to, you know, switch out to a proper lens that would hit that range. I can just, whatever lens I have on camera, I can just turn that on and off and it will um, 
give me double that distance and again without losing quality so i love that feature it made sense for me to put it right next to the lens because it would just it just makes sense to me double the lens the button right next to the lens easy love it and that's it for the function buttons those are run across all of my custom dial settings there will be some extra function buttons that I put into different uh, custom dial settings, but we'll get to those when we come across them. So the next thing I wanna do is jump into the custom dial settings. So let's go ahead and hop in. So what I mean by custom dial settings is if this dial up here, you can change this as much as you want. You can even lock it in place. So you push that button right in the middle and it locks it. For me, on a wedding day, I want to be able to jump around to different settings as quick as possible, and this is the way to do it. So for C1, I set that to my just general shooting um, preferences on a wedding day. So this is what I'm gonna shoot on for like 80, 90% of the day, honestly. So C1, it just made sense to do that. So I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I'll just run across what these settings are. Uh, the first one is the profile that I'm in. I shoot natural. This is just what I'm used to from the GH4 and I like it on the GH5 as well. Um, I shoot natural profile. I set everything down to negative five um, just to get a flatter image. Next is MP4, um, 4K, 150 megabits per second and uh, 4K 10-bit 422 at 24 frames per second with a shutter speed of 50. So those are the settings for C1. Again, that's what I shoot on for the majority of the day. Um, makes it really quick and easy to just set it to C1 and boom, we're good to go. The next thing is C2. I set this to, uh, this is actually my slow-mo setting. So on a wedding day, I don't shoot a lot of slow motion, but there are a few times where, man, you know, this would look really cool in slow motion. So, um, and the, again, the cool thing about the GH5 is it shoots 60 frames per second in 4K. So I definitely wanna take advantage of that. So that's what I've set this dial to. So as you can see here, again, the same natural profile, everything's set to negative five. Um, MP4 shooting in 4K, 8 bit, 420 um, at 60 frames per second. And it automatically switches to 120 shutter so that I still get the same motion blur. So that's C1 and C2 immediately. I mean, I can be shooting normal footage and then switch over to slow mo footage within one second. I love that, makes it super simple. It's awesome. These two dials are the ones that we shoot on for the most of the day, for most of the day. So the next one is going to be C3. And this one's a little different. So as you can see here, we I shoot this is the V-log profile. This is the main difference. V-log I, it's 4K, 10-bit, 422, 24 frames per second and 50 shutter. So the reason I set C3 one, set one, to this setting is because maybe on a wedding day, I'm outdoors um, and I just think, man, I just really need that extra dynamic range um, in my image. And so I can quickly switch to C3 one and just take that shot. You know, I don't shoot the entire day in V-Log. That's just personal preference. I I'm just not I'm, I'm not comfortable <laughs> enough to shoot um, to shoot in vlog for the whole day. Also, I think it just introduces a little extra noise, which I don't know. Um, and I'm okay without the dynamic, the full dynamic range. Um, you know, I've been doing just fine with the GH4, but maybe someday I might switch to full vlog. We'll see. But yeah, I still wanted to set that C31 to vlog um, just in case I wanted that extra dynamic range in a particular shot. Now with this V-Log mode, this is where I start introducing um, an extra function button. So let me show you what that is. 
So we're here still in C3. Oop, there it is. We're still in C3 and I'm gonna hop down here. So you can't really tell too much here, but right now it does have the monitor LUT on. If you don't know what that is, the GH5 um, now, instead of just shooting in V-Log, you can actually apply a monitoring LUT while shooting. Um, and that just means that you're, that just means you're, um, you're viewing your V-Log in a different uh, shooting profile, pretty much, or like a, a LUT that you apply on the image so that it's a lot easier to see what you're shooting because V-Log shoots in a really, you know, flat, low contrast, low saturation kind of, setting and it's really hard to view that image by itself. So by applying that LUT, you can see a lot clearer what you're shooting. It's not the best thing to look at, but it's simply meant for monitoring. So because of that, I wanted to quickly um, potentially turn that LUT on and off really quick. So this on this D-pad, I don't know if it's a D-pad, I'm, I'm an Xbox guy, so it's a D-pad to me. <laughs> um, so on this D-pad here, the up button, that switches the LUT on and off. You can kind of see it happening there. So this is just the Rec. 709. You know, if I wanted to turn it on and off, I can do that really quick. Now what I really wanted to do was be able to switch from LUT to LUT really quick. I think that would be super helpful. Maybe Panasonic can change that in a firmware update. But for now, I couldn't find a way to do that. So this is my solution for that. So I can, right now I have the Rec. 709 LUT on there, but I've also uploaded my own personal LUTs that I think, you know, this is what I want my final image to look like or something that would help me out in the long run or while I'm shooting. So I'm gonna click menu. It automatically opens up to these custom things, but I'm gonna, pop down here to my menu and I have this vlog view assist menu right there. So I don't have to go digging through the menus. It's just in my pro or my menu. I go there. It's currently the let selected is vlog. So I click there and let's say I want to go to false color. Cool. Now I have false color selected. Now this is the regular vlog look. And if I push up, boom, I have false color. I mean, that's so fast, so simple. Um, again, I'll just hop down here, Vlog View Assist, LUT Select, uh, let's say Waltham from James Miller, DLUT Set. Now I can turn that on and off. I mean, that's so simple, so fast on a wedding day. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna be using that false color a whole lot just because I, another way of exposing an image. Um, I, if you can't tell, I'm, I re I'm really into exposing an image properly. Now a different setting that I have for V-Log comes with the zebras. So if you don't know, I'm not gonna get into too much detail on how V-Log you know, displays its luminance levels, but in V-Log mode, uh, the highest IRE setting that you can go is 80 IRE. So that means now uh, the skin tone zebras and the highlight zebras are going to be a little different. And because of that, um, as you can see here, my zebra settings, now it's that same function button, it's still F3, but my zebra one is at 55 and zebra two is at 75. So zebra one, 55, that's for skin tones, and zebra two, 75, that's just so that I don't clip any highlights in the image. So that's just one thing to note about V-Log, and I'll leave a link to a, PDF, excuse me, I'll leave a link to a PDF uh, down below in the description. So that explains everything about Vlog because it was super helpful for me and I definitely want to pass that along to you. But yeah, so that Vlog C3 button dial um, really helps me out. I really wanted to customize that to my liking. So let's hop into the next dial setting, which is C3 2. If you don't know how to get there, uh, you want to make sure that you're still on that C3 dial. And then when you click menu, it actually automatically prompts you to which C3 set you want to look at or you want to be in. 
that V log one is in that C3 one, now C3 two. This one is my higher frame rate variable frame rate option. So this one is at um, shooting a natural profile, MP4. This is full HD now because this is 120 frames per second conforming to 24 frames per second. So the camera does that slow motion internally automatically and uh, automatically set to 250 shutter so that you have good uh, motion blur and whatever you're shooting. Now, I'm not, <laughs> I don't typically go this slow on a wedding day. Um, I, I just like the 60 frames per second look. 120 might be overkill, but if need be, I did want to have that on camera really quick so I could switch to it if I wanted to. You know, maybe there's some, you know, they're blowing bubbles or there's confetti or something awesome that would just it would just look great in really, really slow motion. Um, I wanted to be able to get to that really quick. And the reason I didn't do 180 frames per second is because the 180 frames per second on the GH5 is actually a lot softer. You don't have as good quality. So I just wanted the, the default setting for that super slow motion to be 120, which retains that, you know, it's a really good image quality. So again, it's, hit, it's hitting my um, top priorities of really fast on a wedding day and high quality. Now, let's say I did want to go to that 180 um, and rather than digging through the menus and having to switch that setting manually, I wanted to make a function button so I could hop to that, that menu item really, really quick so I could switch to that 180. So how I did that was actually, um, so on this dial button right here, if I click left, that immediately takes me to the variable frame rate menu. And I can just choose really quick. I can go up and down. I can choose 180 or 156, 168, whatever. Um, and it automatically conforms it to 24 frames per second. So again, if I really wanted super slow motion, let's say I'm on C1, I'm shooting regular footage and the bride is coming down and people are popping confetti. All right, cool, let's switch to C3 and start shooting. I mean, that's super, super simple. Um, I love, love, love these dial settings. It makes my life so much easier. And um, the reason I put the back button or the left button on as the function button, it just made sense for me. If I want slow motion, you go back. I don't know, it makes it slower. <laughs> that makes sense in my mind. Maybe it doesn't in yours. Whatever. I'm making the video. <laughs> um, and the last thing, which uh, on this C3 set two uh, settings, the function buttons that I do, um, I don't, I probably won't use this, but I wanted to put it on there anyways. If I click the right button, that immediately sets the picture profile to V-Log. So I click right, it switches back to natural, click right again, it switches to V-Log, and again, when I'm in V-Log, if I push up, it turns that LUT on and off. So the same thing as C3.1, I've put in C3.2. So now the reason I probably won't use V-Log when shooting super slow motion is because in super slow motion on the GH5, you are only shooting in 8-bit. Um, so, and V-Log, it, it just needs that 10-bit um, recording because it's, um, the, the, when you start grading that, it's gonna fall apart a lot quicker when you're shooting in 8-bit. So, um, I probably won't use the V-Log, but I wanted to have it there just in case. So, lastly, um, it's gonna be that C3 and set three. So, I'm gonna click Menu and hop down to C3 set three. And this one is, <laughs> this is my YouTube setting. This is um, nothing to do with the wedding day. This is just, I, I had one extra slot and so I wanted to make my YouTube shooting a lot quicker. And the purpose for this is 
you know, I'm not gonna color grade this. I don't need it to be the absolute highest quality image. Um, my priority for this is I just wanna be able to shoot it and upload it as quick as possible. So that's what this setting is. So let me walk you through this. So you have, I'm in the like 709 picture profile with the, just a few things tweaked. Um, I have the sharpness down negative two, the noise reduction down negative three and saturation down negative two. Um, I'm not gonna color grade this. I'm not gonna color correct this. It's, it's good as is really. Um, it's still shooting in 4K just because I want that, but it's only at 100 megabits per second and 8-bit. So it's a lot smaller 4K file, but still 4K. Um, and 24 frames per second and a 50 shutter. So <laughs> that again, that's just a really quick um, setting that I can go to if I'm shooting a YouTube video or I'm out and about and I just wanna grab some footage real quick. You know, maybe we're you know, shooting some for family or I don't know. Um, I just wanted to have a quick setting to go to, yeah. But that's it. That, those are my settings for the GH5 on a wedding day. Um, this just makes sense to me. Uh, I hope it made sense to you, my thought process behind why I set those settings on camera. And, you know, it might be different for you. I mean, the, the beauty of having a GH5 and customizing yourself is you, you can customize it yourself. You know, you have your own shooting style. So maybe you don't like slow motion. Um, you know, it's whatever, that's, it's fine. Um, but man, I, I wanna hear like, what, are you a wedding filmmaker? What would you tweak <laughs> in your GH5 settings? Or are you a documentary filmmaker? What kind of, what's, what's your priority when it comes to camera settings? I wanna hear that. Um, Leave them down in the comments below. And I wanna see some people's work. I mean, the, the cool thing about YouTube is that you can, you, you're building a community and that community can share each other's work. So that's what I wanna see. I've seen some people's work and it's awesome. People have reached out asking for advice. It's awesome. Dalton, you're one of those guys. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's just really cool. And I'm really thankful for this community that we're building. And I hope that this video helped you out. So this has been a long one. Thanks for bearing with me and uh, sticking it out to the end. And yeah, what else do y'all wanna hear about the GH5? I wanna hear that too, cause um, as you can tell, I'm really into the GH5 right now and I'm testing it out like crazy. So thank y'all so much and I'll catch you later. Peace.